everybody, welcome to the Faith and Fandom Podcast. This is the Artist's Alley Aftermath Edition for GalaxyCon Richmond 2022. Joined today with my 14-year-old daughter, Rosa Mirai. Hi. Uh, Rosa went with me on this adventure. She also joined me for GalaxyCon Richmond 2020, which was like two weeks before the world ended a couple of years ago. And um, it only felt appropriate to bring her along this time. Also, we wanted to eat good food. Yes, the best restaurant ever is there. Juan Gonzalez. Asian fusion, Asian fused with Mexican. It's the best. It, it, it is very high on my list, um, but Juan Gonzalez is straight up delicious, and it's in downtown Richmond. And I'm not gonna say it's worth going to this show just for that, but it's not far from that. Um, but yeah, uh, we went to a uh, GalaxyCon Richmond. And um, real quick, before we even get to the the end of the podcast or anything like that, I do want to shout out to our Patreon supporters, um, because on a realistic scale, uh, con ministry and con life is a balance of uh, expense versus, you know, especially with the way we do things of, you know, uh, sales and stuff like that. And I can say wholeheartedly that... uh, while it was not a complete like loss or anything as a con, um, had we not had our Patreon supporters backing us on this, uh, just solely with travel, hotel, and table fee, we would not have broke even. Um, plenty of books went out, and we'll talk about all that and everything, but, uh, our Patreon supporters were a big help, um, and I want to especially shout out to uh, Jason Crutchfield, out of our Patreon supporters, who has been doing like our booth sponsorship, uh, and he covered literally our entire table fee for this show. So, that being said, and I'll mention more of our Patreon supporters uh, at the end of the podcast. Um, I just wanted to say thanks for that. But uh, this was a long drive. GalaxyCon Richmond's about three and a half hours. From our house to uh, there, and ch- I don't think the travel was bad. Was like getting there anything sketchy? No, know? not really. Oh. There was just this one part where it smelled bad, but that's like typical road <laughs> stuff. So you know, typical road. Also, the giant Confederate flags every couple hundred miles. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know that like uh, you know, you look out the window, it can hear banjos playing faintly in the distance, and um, but we got there and um. It's, it's kind of nice when you're reestablishing your habits, um, because the last time we went there, we were hopelessly and gloriously lost finding the loading dock at this convention center. And, you know, we learned from experience last time, and, like, not only did I have a rough memory of where it was, like, I saw signs that I completely missed last time, which I'm pretty sure there's a lesson in that somewhere, um, but, like... Or they simply couldn't have been there. They might not have been there. Who knows? But, like, it was definitely a lot easier getting in and out. Um, But one of the cooler things, uh, just in terms of the weekend and travel and everything, uh, Rose and I loaded up all our gear, because I'm on that gangster shopping trip thing of, like, I want to make one trip, like, taking our stuff in and out, no matter how many bags we have to carry. And if you've seen our, um, our stack for getting stuff in and out of cons lately... Uh, it's like seven feet tall and very top heavy and I'm waiting for disaster to strike at some point. I really, you hear me say this out loud because I really need to go ahead and invest in a new cart because one of the wheels are bent and any day now that wheel's going to snap and chaos will ensue. Books and candles and stickers are going to fly across the floor. Death stars. Death stars. We're going to crush somebody's Pokemon card table. I don't even know what's going to happen. Um, but yeah, we need a new cart. <laughs> um, I should put that on my list. Um, you have a list? Of stuff we need? Absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. I need a new microphone, uh, for one. Uh, this Blue Yeti has been serving me since uh, faithfully since 2017. And uh, it, it needs some new love. Um I need a, I don't know if it's a big list. That might be the list. 
for the two things, the microphone two. and the cart. Yeah, those, those might be the two things right now. I don't know. Um, those are the two things at the top of the list. Um, but we loaded it. We crossed the street. We got into the... Um, they have a really like interesting system for loading in. You can pull into the loading dock, unload your stuff, and then you have to move your car, find somewhere to park, then come back and unpack. And um, so... We did. We unloaded, got in there, and I posted on our web stuff, you know, a couple weeks ago, that they had me listed at booth K nine, which I thought was super dope. You know, Doctor Who dog, and you know, I, I was pretty pumped about being at booth K nine. It was at least a good way to say, hey, don't forget us. We're at K nine. Master says or whatever with the, like, yeah, I was gonna make a little used K nine Funko Pop for like advertisement for it. Um, we got into the convention center. And we followed the letters of the tables, once I remembered how, which direction the alphabet goes. Yep, because we saw F and started heading towards A, because that's the way the alphabet goes. Yeah, because um, I, I, I can put 56,000 words in a book, but I can't process A through J that well. Um, but we started heading to our booth, and we got over to the K's, and straight up, the K's ended with like K8. And then it went towards 11, and then it was just like there was this two-number gap just missing. So K9 was just like straight up not on the floor. So I went over to the check-in booth at uh, where they were once I found it, because we managed to miss check-in, and um, saw some folks, and I said, hey, uh, Hector, Faith and Fandom, and uh, the guy was like rifling through the box to pull it out, and I said, I think I'm booth K9. The guy's like, no, you're not. I'm like, oh. Oh, okay. And then he very kindly just looked up at me and was like, Hey, uh, we consider you a valuable artist and we appreciate you. So we upgraded you to a 10 by 10 booth. And then I, you know, was like ridiculously thankful for that because that's a huge thing because um, I can't afford a booth like that. Um, even with help, it's just, it's kind of outlandish for us. And. Uh, you know, getting a booth that nice is a huge win because a six foot table that's not even a full two feet deep and only having six feet behind you, mm. it, it's a lot because, you know, as we grow, it's more and more stuff. And so I heard that and then like Rosa was waiting with our stuff over in the empty slot that should be K9. And then I did like a little dance like walking over there like I was doing a wrestling intro and like shimmied over and said we got a good booth follow me and like you know it, it was cool so like I spent the rest of the time while we were unloading like grinning and giggling and like tee hee look at us he honestly looked like the penguin when he was doing that dance just like waddling over there we're talking like the Batman penguin or yeah. okay all right just a little waddle like eh eh waddle oh uh, yeah my movements are bigger in my head than they probably are in my body. Um, <laughs> but uh, we unloaded and I went by the uh, check-in booth probably five times before we left that night just to say thank you. Um, because honestly, I was super pumped. Because um, we'd forget something in the car, run back over there, and I'd say, I just want to say thank you guys. This means a lot. Okay, bye. And like run back. So we got unloaded. Got settled with that and um, realized we did not bring enough stuff really to fill a whole 10 by 10 booth. We could have brought another table. We could have brought like our folding table, like my DJ table, and laid stuff on that. We could we could have done a lot. DJ um, Roomba. <laughs> but DJ Roomba. Yeah. Yeah, DJ Roomba. Yeah. Um, but I could I could have done a lot more, but we didn't know we'd gotten upgraded. Not complaining at all. But uh, so. That put us smack dab between some people that were selling coasters made of playing cards mm. and a punk kilt and corset booth that also sold jewelry, which is its own special bland brand of flavor of people. We were right across from a dude selling Pokemon cards and a dude selling movie posters, and that was our little sandwich of folk. <laughs> and, uh... So yeah, it was quite interesting, and because we were in a bigger space, we honestly didn't interact with them a ton, 
We heard their, you know, sales pitches and stuff like everybody else always hears ours. And then the guy with, the, like, the playing cards, he had a, the, about, like, the same seven songs on repeat the whole day. So yeah. That was, <laughs> that was interesting. Like, yeah, for three days, they played maybe the same seven songs on repeat, which was uh, Intergalactic. Um, no Sleep Till... Uh, no Sleep Till Brooklyn. Uh, uh, it's Tricky. Um, Funky Monkey. And brass uh, monkey, brass yeah, brass monkey, that funky monkey, yeah. Sorry, that's not the title. <laughs> Jeez, don't see me. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, they basically played like five Beastie Boy songs and two uh, D- Run DMC songs on repeat the whole weekend. Yeah, and it, it just it, again, I actually didn't mind it. It didn't ruin my weekend. It's not like that one time. We were in Virginia, and we were beside the Ghostbusters car that played the Ghostbusters theme <laughs> <laughs> for eight hours, because that was that was torture. Uh, that was something else. That was literally we heard the Ghostbusters theme and siren for eight hours straight, and um, it, along with the sound of wrestling. Um, so it was just a lot on that show. See, the wrestling wasn't bad for me because I actually went over there and watched it. <laughs> All I heard was body slamming. I mean, that's been a few years too, but. <laughs> anyway, so we got through our first night of setting up, and then we went to Juan Gonzalez, um, which was absolutely delightful. And um, you know, we got like uh, a bowl that had like shrimp and edam- ed- edamame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, cool, said that right. Yeah. And it was just and that, and we got like fancy desserts, and like we we went in to just to celebrate what we were hoping was going to be a good weekend, and. Uh, so, when I book hotels, <laughs> um, when I book hotels, I don't always think about who's with me, and, and you know, I don't always think, you know what, Rosa or Bella or Carmen are coming with me. I don't always think about that. And so, sometimes I'm just like late at night looking at the cost, the distance, and trying to say, how cheap can I be here and still be f- fruitful without ruining my life and i thought i had picked a good hotel because i picked a super eight which is usually not on my radar um but i remember bella and i stayed at a super eight when we did Asheville a couple years ago and it was really nice like i kept that resting for the journey ahead Mm -hmm. door hanger forever and i really enjoyed that one y'all this was straight up bad life choices um the minute like we walked inside the lobby um i knew it was a bad life choice um there was a random abandoned bag of clothing in a grocery bag there's a lady uh being less than professional behind the glass and um it smelled like weed before we even got inside Mm -hmm. which i mean that's a lot of less than stellar hotels are that way um and but then, like, the, the kicker, <laughs> the kicker for me was once we got off the elevator <laughs> on the second floor, there was a young man with on a phone call on speakerphone. I think it was a FaceTime, too. Yeah, I think it was FaceTime, too. There was a young man on the phone, and he was picking at, and I don't say this is a slander, I say this is a, just for your description, because we're on audio format here. He was picking... At a very, very crusty toenail. And I'm so sorry for this. Um, that was literally casting off shards of debris. And littering... <laughs> Why are you saying it like that? That's a good description. Is it, am I wrong? It sounds like something from like a gory uh, horror movie, but you're talking about toenails. Uh, it was a horror movie for me. The uh, Foot. <laughs> it's just called The Foot. Um, but there were like chunks of crusty toenail popping off like drywall plaster mm. on a, in a derelict building and <laughs> just 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 stop <laughs> and so like and i was just literally and i almost stopped walking I almost just stood there and stared at this man picking at a say he's, <laughs> he's in shorts and a t-shirt barefoot sitting there picking his crusty toenail on his facetime and so i'm like and then the smell hit me the indian food <laughs> Like, uh, and, and this is, no, again, no negative, um, but Indian food has a strong smell when it's cooked in a small place. Um, and 
uh, it was very strong because uh, we had some friends, Ruchi and Devong, that we I shared some space with them for a while, and their food had a very strong smell. Um, and I could tell that there had been fresh Indian food prepared that night, mixed with the smell of weed, mixed with the mental trauma of toe the toenail uh, barrage that was in our <laughs> Are hallway. Are you just trying to find more words for this? More words. Um, so, you know, that that was like, and I literally felt defeated walking into that hotel. And I was like, what did I do? Why did I do this? <laughs> and then our hotel room was full of things that honestly just made me further echo that statement. And I was really, really sad with my life choice. But I'm like, okay, I can't get my money back on this one. Lord, let's just get through this. And make better life choices next time. And make better life choices, because i got to book Heroes Con until soon. So, have you, fun. Yeah, you don't I'm have to. I'm not going to that one. You're not going to that one. Um, I don't think anybody is, actually. No, because I have camp that week. Yeah. Um, and I'm leaving for Ponderosa as soon as it ends. So, we'll we'll see how that plays out. Um, I, I've actually always stayed at the um, Microtel, at least the last five years, or six years in Charlotte. It's really nice. Um hmm. But, uh, so all that being said, it was a rough night with that, a lot of, a lot of discomfort, but you know, my fault. So we head to the show, um, we get started the first day and, um, it was a Friday, but it started at two and went to eight, which is really weird hours for a Friday. It really was. Cause like it felt so out of place when we woke up out in the morning, it's like 10 and we're just sitting there for a while and I'm just like, what do I do with this? It's, like, not normal con hours at all. <coughs> and, uh, yeah. So it was that, and as we were walking around before the show even started, I failed and spent, like, a bunch of money before the show. Like, a bunch relatively, like, not, like, badly, but, like, I spent too much. Uh, one of my favorite artists at the cons is an artist named Drew A. Blank, and I bought plenty of his stuff over the years, and, like, I ended up buying a bunch of stuff that day, like, I bought, um, uh, Harvey, and I can't remember his name, but Guillermo from What We Do in the Shadows, uh, was there. I bought a pin of his character to give to him later. Um, and I bought, like, a What We Do in the Shadows pin. A Ted Lasso bookmark that is flippin' delightful, and it's in my Bob Goff book now, and it feels like it's only appropriate. Yeah. Um, and, cause Ted and Bob would be best friends. They would. And I bought an office coloring book. And I was just like, and there's there's a lot of good stuff. And I bought a couple uh, Letterkenny pens. And um, there's just good stuff. I really enjoyed it. Um, but I, I just came back. The show hadn't even started. And Which was really ironic because about six hours later, I found a sticker and a button I thought my friends would really like. He was like, why don't you wait towards Sunday? And I'm just like... You bought stuff before the con even started. How are you going to tell me to wait till Sunday? Most of my life is teaching you from my mistakes. The ones you made this morning? Yeah, including the, <laughs> including the ones I made this morning. Yes, ma'am. And um, Was it a mistake, though? I don't know. Did you get the stuff you needed later? Yes. Okay, we're fine. Um, but that being said... Um, so yeah, the show started off well. It was kind of slow for a Friday, but I mean, it's also a Friday. Um, I will say that uh, I got to go meet a few people as soon as the show started. Um, I waited. I met like uh, everybody was supposed to be there at 2.30 that I was waiting on. And I got in line at 2 and did not. It was about 3.30. Yeah, when, when you got back. When I got back. And um, at 3.10, you said you were like, you had already met someone, so. Yeah. So, uh, I waited to meet, uh, Alan Richson, 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 um, Beastie Boy's name, I don't know, uh, the dude who plays, uh, uh, Hawk slash Aquaman slash Reacher slash Raphael, and, um, and also somebody from Blue Mountain State. Um, I wanted to meet him, I wanted to meet him in general because of, uh, Titans, because I thought his portrayal of Hawk was dope, but also... The really, really painful backstory with Hawk and Dove and uh, and abuse and stuff like that that they told. Honestly, is one of the best things that I think DC's produced. And was, in my personal opinion, the best scenes out of Titans. Um, and plus, just the week before, 
like we watched Reacher and we watched it in one sitting, like all eight episodes because it was just really impressive. So I wanted to meet him. He was top of my list. Um, right beside him was uh, Curran Walters, who is uh, the Red Hood slash Jason Todd um, from uh, Titans. And uh, I've been back and forth on this because he's not my favorite Red Hood um, portrayal. But at the same token, he is the first live action Jason Todd Red Hood portrayed on screen. So I felt like that's important. And I had a Red Hood helmet and I wanted him to sign it. Um, which did get signed. Which did get signed. Um, he also uh, confirms. Remember I told you in that one episode, the fight with Nightwing, that I've said since the first time I watched it that they were quoting Hamilton. Yes. They, he said, yes, that was 100% a Hamilton quote. Um, and they were also quoting, uh, he tried to incorporate a musical into every episode hmm. where he mentioned some musical in one way or the other. But he totally put in a Hamilton quote in his Nightwing fight scene. Um, very nice, very nice. Appreciated. And, and he also said that uh, there's a lot more Jason Todd Red Hood coming. Um so for the, you know going ahead of that so that's coming so those were the first two people i met then i met um harvey who plays guillermo and he was delightful and i gave him his pen and uh he put his pen on and he wore it the rest of the day and he took pictures with that so i thought it was pretty cool and i even went by drew's booth and said hey uh homeboy's wearing your pen and showed him a picture he thought it was pretty neat um but uh you know that's it was just kind of neat and uh then the con day went on for the most part, as normal, which includes, if you've heard us talk about this before, there's everybody's base reactions of either people walk by and they don't care, people walk by and they're offended, but they just walk really fast to get away from it, people walk by and they display, oh, Jesus, and they get really upset about it, like, what was, what was that voice? I don't know, it was just, you know, whatever, um, but you you know what I'm saying when yeah. people people are like literally trying to make sure they that you know that they are offended by your presence, and the people who are interested and then the people who are like excited. So it's it was the the mix and balance of all of those things, and uh, lots of good. But one one thing I thought was really neat is Clint Howard. Um, for y'all that are Rosa was not even remotely old enough to remember who he is, but Clint Howard, you know Ron Howard's little brother. Um, from all of the movies in the 70s and 80s and stuff, um, came by my booth, and we just chatted for a little bit, and that was super dope. Um, you know, this is a guy who I've been seeing and stuff since I've grown up, and he started asking me questions about being a vendor and an artist and all this stuff. That was really neat. And um, I saw a cosplayer walk by, and keep in mind, I'm three hour, three and a half hours from home. I saw a cosplayer walk by, I was like, and I pointed, I said, your costume's awesome. Oops, sorry, I shouldn't point at you. She's like, hey. I went to UNCP with you, and then I just walked away. It was just like, <laughs> like, okay. like okay. I and she's and it's like, I still don't know who it was, but they recognized me. And then, um, you know, we, it was just neat. There's a lot of people that were from our area, or from past portions of our life that we we're crossing paths with. Um, so that was neat. Um, we gave out a lot of Pokemon cards. Yeah, uh, we ran out. Uh, we ran out on day two, but um. There was one lady who, uh, had all her whole family was Pokemon cosplayers, and there was a little kid on her dad's shoulders dressed like a Vulpix. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, went out of my way to be really, hey, would you like some book? Like, you know, would you like some Pokemon cards, that stuff? And, uh, she got a whole bunch, and some other kids in the family got some cards. And is that the same kid I gave a Han Solo wax melt yes, to? Yes, it is. Because she. When she got it, she got a little pink one, and she just picked it up, and she was still sitting on her dad's shoulder, and she just sat it on top of his head and stared at it. It was funny to me. Yeah, like, she, she wanted to, she was playing with the candles, and, you know, they're saying, oh, you can't have fire and stuff like that. I was like, well, you can have a wax milk. And, um, so the mom, like, literally just, like, gave me $20 and said, uh, thank you for trying to make my kids show special. And I was just like, I was like, you don't have to give us money, but she's like, you know, it made a difference, and... You know, there's we've given away thousands of Pokemon cards at our booth just since October. And, um, you know, it was just nice that they actually, you know, appreciate that. Not the money of it, but, like, that a parent saw that we were making an effort to make the show better for their kids. So that was pretty cool. Um, one really neat thing we found out uh, at the show on Friday 
is last time we were at Richmond, uh, there was a couple that sat down together Mm -hmm. at our panel about, you know, Faith and Fandom, the open discussion panel, a Galaxy Con Richmond in 2020. A couple met that day at our panel, sitting at the same table, started dating then, and have been together for the last two years. And they both came by. And I just thought that was really neat that, you know, ladies and gentlemen, you can find love (laughs) at our panels. It's like an awkward Christian mingle for nerds. Um, Peter Tingles and stuff like Mm -mm. that. No, we're done with that. (laughs) Um, So anything else from you for that, like, first day or anything really jumped out to you? So, like, the first day, just, like, looking through some of our photos. So, and by the way, if you aren't familiar, you can check out our uh, photos on the Faith and Fandom page um, and Instagram to uh, just kind of see some of our adventures with that. Um, but the first day was, like, a, it was a good day with it. And, honestly, at that point in time, we, it was too late for me to, because that first day didn't really end um, until 8 but by the time we got out of there, we went we went to Trader Joe's. Is that no? We didn't go to Trader Joe's. We went to where'd we go to get snacks that next day? Uh, we went to Walmart. Oh, was it Walmart? It was a neighborhood Walmart. Yeah. yeah. Um, but what we did that all was funny to me. I had to take a math test, so we ended up going to a Taco Bell parking lot and just sitting there for twenty minutes so I could take a math test since I wasn't in school. Yeah, so we we did, we sat out, we sat for 20 minutes outside of a Taco Bell for her to take a math test. Oh, and we went to Panera and got salads. That's what we did. Yeah, we went to Panera and got salads because our bodies needed it after eating Nashville hot chicken tenders. You got Nashville hot chicken tenders. I got normal ones because it is con food, and I don't necessarily trust spicy con food. Yeah. But I ate Nashville hot chicken tenders on a con floor, which tells you I don't value my life the way God intends. Um, <laughs> we also met a uh, dude who was a uh, Dalek and Cyberman from Doctor Who in the 70s. And I felt really bad for that dude because they straight shoved this man in the cosplay corner. Well, I understand it, a space is limited, but um, dang. When you see a cosplay corner, unless you're really like into building armor and stuff, you're not really going to go back there. Yeah. Um, just on that note, the most popular cosplay at the show was easily uh, Nezco. Mm-hmm. And I feel like for the first time ever, um, Ahsoka was like right on her heels. Yeah, because... Uh... Ashley Eckstein, Steen, Stein, whatever, was there. Yeah. But uh, even with that, there weren't that many Ahsoka cosplayers at Raleigh. But there was a strong uptick. In Ahsoka. In Ahsoka cosplayers. And there was a strong uptick in uh, Attack, Attack on, on Titan. Titan. Especially the ones with like the green cloaks from the newest season. I saw like a million Armands. I saw a million Armands. And I saw a million old Aarons. Oh, yeah. With like the black lines under the eyes and stuff and everything. Like the, the cosplayers were black. Mm-hmm. Um, With, like, the brown jacket and the man bun. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the man bun, Aaron. Um, so, the cosplay community, I, I really love how quickly they adapt to things. I only saw one Riddler. Like... Really? Of the new version. Really? I only saw one. Dang. Um, I saw one, and that was on Sunday. I uh, saw at least one each day. Um, so, there, the new Riddler was about... Uh, there was a vigilante from Peacemaker. But one of my favorite things is there was a vigilante in his uh, work restaurant outfit. Which was just hilarious to me. Like, like there's he basically works at like a Denny's or something. Oh, I was wondering what that cosplay was. Because like, I saw the picture of it. I was like, what is this? Yeah, Wegmans or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he was there, there was even a cosplayer of that. So, there was a few Peacemakers and stuff like that. So, it was pretty cool. Um... Day two, like, uh, was a the long, long day. It uh, was 12 hours, I think? No, 10. 10, yeah. Because it went from 10 to 8, if I'm not mistaken. It went from 10 to 8, and um, it was also our first day with a panel. And uh, so we got there. Uh, Rosa was cosplaying... Uh, Nezuko. Nezuko that day. 
The day before I was Hanji from Attack on Titan. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and that's another thing, like, no complaints whatsoever, but, like, when you have to incorporate prep time for cosplays in <laughs> your setup, it adds, it adds more timing. And, um, but one of the things I did do is I brought my guitar in and put a Geek Church sign on the guitar to advertise for that. Um, but, uh, with that, Rosa was going to, her best friend, am I allowed to say that? Okay. Yeah. Um, her best friend and her family were coming up to hang out with Rosa that day at the con. So I knew I was going to be alone a good portion of the day. Um, he would just send me random messages throughout the day going, PP dance. So I'm yeah. just like, okay, cool. Yeah, I'd send PP dance text with uh, gifts of like, you know, awkward dances. Um, but, uh. Like, uh, with that, we had our Faith and Fandom discussion panel, and uh, you can see some pictures of that on our stuff, but uh, it's a really good discussion, but I honestly feel like I only talked for 15 minutes of the 45 minutes we were in there, because other people were talking on stuff like of filtering for your kids, um, how hard it is to adapt to church life in America after being in Japan. And where Japan actually does better at, like, being the church and loving each other. Mm. And and so there's just a lot of good discussion that was in there from actors that were, you know, discussing how to do their roles. And the audio, the, uh, the audio is not going to be posted for the panel just because um, the room is so deep that I couldn't hear the people when they were discussing it. And I wasn't talking long enough to even really be picked up with that. Um... So, but it was a good panel. Uh, it was a really good panel, and I was grateful to be doing it. And again, grateful to GalaxyCon for working with me with that. But uh, then it just kind of really set in. Um, there were people like our panel was at eleven, and even before the panel, we had three people come by our booth to ask to make sure that I was still doing the panel, which was cool. Um, uh, there was a mom in there that was just a. Uh, looking for good recommendations for her kids. Um, there was, uh, there was just a lot of good stuff. We, uh, we, I had one, uh, person, or there are two people that said they were trying to get to our panel, but they showed up late and they said, sorry, we missed your panel. Tell us everything that happened. And like, so these two people literally came to the booth and wanted me to recount the entire panel including everybody else's discussions and you know what that was freaking awesome because i'm grateful that people cared enough to actually want to do that and then um i don't keep book one out in front of the rack or anything i brought a couple copies in case somebody really really wanted it and like somebody came by and bought the entire set of books plus the uh the uh like some shirts and stuff too it was just really neat there were some really good responses with that overall um but day two just really was a super long day yeah like, and then afterwards we ended up going to eat at Juan Gonzalez again because Rosa talked it up so well to her friends family that uh we ended up going to Juan Gonzalez again and it, that's that was fine with me um because I had talked about it like the week before the con <laughs> and um there were just some really dope cosplays Saturday as well I saw a bunch of Leon Kennedy's um, which is, just makes me happy. And we put, uh, I just, I, there's always action figures on our booth and I put a Nezco riding Appa. And honestly, that was like everybody's favorite thing. They were just like, oh my gosh, is that Nezco on Appa? Yeah. And it was just really good. And just looking through some of the cosplays there, there, there are a lot of dope cosplays. Um, one, no, that's for Sunday. Let's see. I'm just flipping through some more. Um, I will say that, uh, we had... Uh, one of our people that have just been really cool and supportive to us, uh, if you've listened to our stuff before, uh, I've mentioned that there was someone who came, like, drove hours to come tell us at GalaxyCon Richmond in 2020, we had someone that drove hours to come tell us that they liked our memes. And that was one of, like, just the coolest things in the world to me, that someone cared enough about just the memes that I make, um to actually come and say something about that. And so, uh, just, uh, Jillian, uh, really grateful for you and just for your family's presence with that. Uh, Jillian came by 
to see us at our booth all three days was at our panel on Saturday and you know they're just and then just kept coming by to make sure see if I needed drinks or anything like that so uh it was it was a really good experience but I have to say there came a point on Saturday because once I came in from the panel I knew I was going to be sitting down or standing at that booth for roughly uh eight hours straight by myself and about six hours into that I had the thought I am so freaking tired of smiling yeah. Like, cause not just like, it's one thing not to look ugly or not to look mean or not to look grumpy. Like it's okay to have like a stoic or just like a plain face, but to be proactive and actually smiling at everyone is exhausting. And like, you know, I, I got tired about six hours into that. Um, but, uh, so yeah, then we, we finished that. We went to Juan Gonzalez with Rose's friend's family and we got back super late. I, practice a little bit of music um for geek church and worked on some powerpoints um as we or pro presenter or whatever for i didn't even use pro, whatever it was we made slides yeah. yeah uh made slides and did all that stuff and basically i just collapsed because i was exhausted um sunday morning was an early morning we got up got cracking unpacked our hotel joyfully left there after spray painting rose's hair red Wait, no, that was Saturday. That was Saturday. Yeah, also, spray painting a kid's hair red in a hotel before you start your day is exactly what you want to do in a, a poopy hotel. Um, a good... uh, and then it'll smell like acetone for the rest of the day, added to the rest of the delightful smells of the hotel. We added to the, the ambiance. <laughs> um, uh, but, so, Sunday went in. You know what? We started out Geek Church good response good just i mean just a great experience and if you're interested you can listen to the whole service on our podcast it's up and it's already up there now and um and there's even some of the uh slides are on the website in the geek church geek church post um so but sunday was just it was a good day um and just good interactions with people and met some other folks that were ministers in different areas um gave some folks some resources to help them and how they connected with their um families and you know what like i i still actually don't know how we did financially um at this show because i was tired when we came home and um you know i i i don't know how we did um i know we did sell out of some books which was cool sold out of one or two stickers um candles definitely went down at least by half um but we also gave away a lot of books um there was an ahsoka cosplayer that was uh actually in the church service and a nezuko cosplayer that were in the church service and when they came by the booth uh i just gave them the book that had their respective characters in it um just and said thank you um but it's also a thing now that you know because all of our chapters are on the website, like, I feel wrong not telling people that before they buy books now. Like, I want, it's almost like I'm trying to talk them out of buying books. Like, hey, I know you're interested, but don't buy this because you can read it for free. And the, I did say that a few times, um, not telling them not to, but a lot of times people still want to buy it anyway, which is cool. Um, but we finished up Sunday in a... What was your favorite thing that uh you saw at the show? My bracelet that I got. Oh yeah. Um. So if you've seen any pictures or videos or anything of me, uh, since July, I've been rocking this burly piece of armor bracelet, um, that I picked up at Galaxy Con Raleigh, um, from a lady that her booth is called Steam. Steampunk Garage. Steampunk Garage, and I love this bracelet. Like I'm pretty confident this bracelet could stop a bullet um don't shoot me though and um i mean you kind of threw a battering at me i feel like i could return the favor you yeah there's no there's no excuse for that um when rosa was little she was dressed like wonder woman with like actual metal cuffs and i had a metal battering in my hand and like just in my head it played out super cool so i threw (laughs) i threw the battering at her and um when man she was like six 
And I threw the battering at her, and she straight, without blinking, Wonder Woman tink cuffed it and blocked it. And it was one of the coolest things ever, but it was also stupid dangerous. But anyway. Um, was it bad parenting? That is the question. Yes, it was bad parenting. Okay, but okay. in the same token, it was great parenting because I taught you what to do. <laughs> and you deflected it. So it's a it, it's it's a draw. Um, but anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know where we were going. What was I saying? Armor. Oh, steampunk, yeah. So I went and found this lady. I told her how much I appreciated her stuff. And I got a new necklace, which kind of looks like Tony Stark's arc reactor. It does. Um, and Rosa got a, brain, a bracelet. So it was cool. Um, that, yeah, yeah, that was cool stuff. Um, we also had a dude come by and he gave me a copy of his book and wrote me an inscription in it. Um, it was just, it was a really good and supportive thing. And honestly, every time out there, uh, day I was there, I went, I was just grateful the fact that I got a booth upgrade, I was grateful that they let me have panels and a church service and that people actually showed up at 10, 15 in the morning before the con even really got started and they had to leave early to get there and they were paying to get in. All of that just made me super excited. Um, and Jason Crutchfield, who I previously mentioned, came by on Sunday and he hung out by the booth for a long while. And Jason's just super cool. He always like just supports us with that. So it's crazy grateful. Um, I was tired on the drive back, but no shocker there. And um, I just played loud music in the car and read. So yeah, and I just tried to make it through. Um, on our way out of the loadout, um, the sticker board got <laughs> got caught by the wind and flew off down the street. And I'm like, I and there was no way you're gonna couch. It it went at least about a football field and a half. And another vendor eventually caught it and just held on to it before Rosa could drop all of our gear and go get it. And I had no problem with a board flying away, but it had about $20 or $30 worth of stickers on it. And I was just like, I need you back. And um, it not only was stopped from flying away, not a single sticker left, which I consider a huge win. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was a big one. Um, any other commentary for the, the con overall? Mm, I don't think so. Uh, would you want to do this one again? Yes. Um, we did sign up, so we're already booked for uh, Galaxy Con Richmond 2023. Um, uh, hopefully that all pans out well. Um, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed being there. Uh, I, my only real regret for the whole weekend was uh, my hotel choice. So I will try and do better. With that, as we move forward with our lives and not make that same choice two times. Um, so I, next time you look at hotels and you see a Super 8 listed, we just don't click it. Uh, not in Richmond. Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's going to kind of wrap us up. Just a couple things before we roll out. I am taking, prospectively, the next couple months off from vending. At shows, just because I'm doing theater practice for The Wizard of Oz. Um, during this time, hopefully Timmy Martins <laughs> um, is editing book eight so that we can get it published and ready for June. And um, because we need to get that book ready by June. And um, so we are doing that. And uh, we may not be at a show vending, but uh, I've got an offer to do Geek Church at Fayetteville Comic Con on a Sunday morning there. So that might be a functional thing. Um, also was asked by XCon and Myrtle beach to do geek church for them on a Sunday morning. So I appreciate those offers and stuff with that. And, um, those might be happening. Our next show that I'm fully aware of is going to be a uh, heroes con, which is the third weekend in June. And, um, we should be there with book eight in hand and uh, just rocking and rolling with that. Um, so before we roll out, first of all, I wanted to say thank you, Rosa, for being there and being such a gangster the whole time because uh, it takes a lot of patience. There is fun stuff involved, but uh, the reality is is a lot of work for you and you missing school and still trying to get all your stuff done with that. There's just um, there's a lot going on for you to do that, so I appreciate you for being there. Um, and... Also, I want to, as I previously mentioned, thank our uh, 
Patreon supporters for being so cool and supporting us in such awesome ways. Um, so real quick, want to shout out our uh, Patreon supporters. Um, Jason Crutchfield, Mike Perna, Todd Turner, Jonathan Jacobs, Zach Harris, uh, Caleb Grimm, Jeanette Skaggs, Chris Poirier, Chris Cook, Jason Bullock, who just had a new short film released, uh, Christina Ray, Sarah Lewis, Patrick Gale, Rebecca Godlove, Adam Davis, and Stephanie Schwann. You guys are fantastic, and I love and appreciate you for all that you have done and are doing. And um, I just, I just want to say thank you for being so cool and supportive of that. If you want to be part of making this stuff happen, uh, because after I'm done with Wizard of Oz, we're going to pick back up a little heavily into the con seasons. If you want to be part of making that happen, you can join us at uh, patreon.com slash faith and fandom. Remember that you can check out all the chapters, all the books at faith and And I guess you know where to find our podcast if you're listening to this. But uh, you can go to faithandfandom.podbean.com for more podcasty goodness. So uh, thanks so much for being a part of this as we are on this journey of helping people find God in geek culture. Hope you have a great night. Got a goodbye or anything? Goodbye. Goodbye.